Is it true that yeah. uh, mechanics, not like NASCAR mechanics, were doing it with no gloves before mechanics came around? Yeah, they were either doing it with, with no gloves or they were doing it with batting gloves or leather gloves, whatever was wow. available. That's but this was, this was almost, yeah, quite a long time ago. Yeah. Hi, I'm Max from The Hundreds, and today we're out here at the beautiful Mechanics Wear headquarters in Valencia, California, where we're going to get behind the curtain and meet the people who are in charge of making your favorite glove. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Johnny, nice yeah. to meet you. My name is Kenny Safford. Uh, I'm the product manager here at Mechanics Wear. You designed the first glove. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about that experience a little bit, what, what that was like? At the time, the company was a motocross company. A mechanic who requested the, the product was a, a mechanic of one of our riders, Damon Bradshaw. We didn't know anything about, about that particular segment of the market because there really wasn't a market, you know? There, there, there wasn't a, a performance glove market. So we're like, dude, let's just do something, kind of get this guy off our back. So we took a motocross glove, cut all the protection off the top, kind of slid it off to him and said, here, try this out, you know? He said, this is good. I'm gonna show it to some of my buddies, which happened to be, you know, Dale Earnhardt. The thing exploded. We we went from making one to, like I say, you know, 140 different models. This is a, called the Tabor Abrazer. So it's a machine that you put a piece of material on a disc and then you apply weight. And when you apply the weight, it will detect when a hole is done on the on the material, the substrate. So it allows, it basically gives us an idea of how good a material is. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, just a, a tiny hole, it'll detect. Yeah, any hole. The beauty of what we do is, is our samples are run through the, through the production line. So there's not a separate sample department which, which does things in particular. So this goes right into general production so that you know that when you get your sample, it's pretty much you know 98% how it's gonna fit and feel. Two or three weeks later, we get the sample. This is kind of our general purpose glove. Uh, it started out like as being the glove that uh, NASCAR mechanics were gonna use. This glove replaced what they were wearing in, in the 90s. You know, it, was re it replaced like a batting glove. This is our journeyman product. This thing does everything. This is this is one glove for 100 uses. We sell this glove to military guys so you can you can shoot in it. We sell it to uh, gardeners, to DIY guys. We sell it to Granger and Lowe's and I mean it, this glove this glove goes everywhere and pretty much does everything. It's a jack of all trades. So. Yeah. You guys are in a lot of movies, right? Yeah, we're in Zero Dark Thirty and Lone Survivor. Cut cut from the other video where I was trying to think of it. It's a simple arrangement. They their prop masters typically email us, myself or Corey, and we provide them products within reason and you know we're we're not in you know we we don't pay for play so to speak but we're we're more than happy to supply them products so that their movies authentic and yeah. so so that's what we do but the the coverage in zero dark 30 and lone survivor and lone survivor was oh my gosh Talk about mark Wahlberg being a badass yeah Man, that's awesome. he is <laughs> he is product wide i feel like the mechanics club has been adopted for pretty much every application i know you guys have moved into tactical gloves can you talk a little bit about what that transition was and why you now make this huge variety of gloves for military we had customers that were on like camp pendleton and uh, fort bragg so we were selling our product in that arena but it was really made for you know, guys who are working on jeeps and guys, you know, kind of monkeying around on base, not really for guys who are actually pulling triggers. So, the, the jump from from being a mechanics type of product to a tactical type of product just kind of happened seamlessly. So they were using them because they were familiar with them on the base. They performed well, they held up well, they were made with materials that, that enhanced, you know, fit, feel, and function. So it just kind of led right into being able to, for them to use it you know, actually in field. This was the first uh, header card, how the glove was packaged. It was on a, uh, an end wrench. Pretty cool. So, 1992. Can I see that? Yeah, yeah. Whoa. That's the 100s glove? Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the process of developing the, the 100s glove? Yeah, the Hunters Club is is kind of unique because it's a it's a partner project. It's a collaboration. What you guys wanted was something that was still had the heritage and still had the DNA of a of a mechanics work product. Which this is the original glove. This is a glove that that sold two million pairs a year. And what we did was we took our language and our our features, our material, and we embellished it with the Hunters. So we sprinkled you know some of your guys' logos on it. We we took some input as far as. Uh, colorization. We incorporated a, a special silicone print on the palm so that it's not super in your face that it's a collaboration but uh, you can see that the palms it's a silicone print says the hundreds. It is unique to the hundreds in the sense that it's it's kind of a quasi covert and quasi racing product. We make our gloves vending machine ready. Oh sweet. So, so where can I get mechanics gloves in a vending machine? 
Mostly on job sites and okay. things like that. There's a company called Fastenal that's kind of uh, brought this, this whole concept. You have this glove folded up, insert card, shrink wrap, and it goes in the coils. It's a really efficient way to sell gloves. Do you guys have like a mantra or any kind of saying that encompasses what your pursuit is when you design a new product? You know, obviously that the kind of the mission statement of the company is, you know, the tool that fits like a glove. Um, but what we what we try to do in the design department is, is solve solve a problem. You know, as designers and as developers, we take we take the problem first and then solve it with a product. But what we do with gloves, we kind of take pretty serious because it started out as a protection brand out of motocross, kind of bled into mechanics with a C. Guys were relying on our products to to do what they did better to keep them safe. So that kind of language has carried over from 1991 until you know 2015 so we take what we do pretty seriously uh, the product is you know we're not trying to cure cancer obviously but uh, we like to provide a product and, uh, and products that will make what you do better yeah that's awesome i think that goes into the product design itself yeah thank you that's it The dude is a streaker. He obviously didn't care about being naked in front right. of people, True. right? True. Like that's, that's something normal people like us do right. if he's actually